Thank you so much, Jess. Yeah, LG does come out on top undefeated in this division, looking very strong 4-0. and But E United puts up a really strong fight there. I, I want to break that down a little bit. I, I mean, Joe, what do you think changed? Because when we were given our predictions, all of a sudden today, E United, after what we saw in this division, they went from one of our higher teams uh, like on our watch list to a, a team that we were worried about. I, I mean, they went to a game five, right? They took a hard point. They took a capture the flag away from Luminosity. That's two respawns against LG. You shouldn't be upset at all. They just didn't win their searches, which they've been known to do for a very long time now. I mean, it was a very close series overall. I don't think it's anything to be frustrated about if you're United. Probably the match last night you're more fr frustrated about because it was honestly just not the best showing at all against FaZe yeah. Clan. Uh, so I think this was a better showing than last night. I, I think it's actually the opposite. Yeah, I think you want to be a, a little bit happy with this performance after coming off some, some difficult losses. I mean, they, they look strong against LG, which is undeniably one of the tougher teams. They, they need to find a way to beat LG if they want to be able to win tournaments, though. But Chance, what happened inside of this hard point? Uh, I think JCAP made a good point. I think LG just started out a little bit too slow. I, I think Slack started off like 9 and 18. And of course, the United getting the streaks early on was very, very helpful. We can see the flamethrower makes it to the very end of the game. But Clayster, uh, incredibly nice performance. You got to give props to him, 43 and 29. But the value of a player that I have for Pristini, like, I, I think he's incredible because he is incredibly aggressive, but he wastes no energy to, like, ever, like, play his life in an unnecessary situation. Like, if he has teammates with him, there is just instant reaction. I will dive at the enemy and at the very least bait for my teammates, if not picking up crazy kills. So, like, if he's having a good game, E United should be able to just cruise through the respawns. And even when he's having an off match, like, the rest of United is right behind him to pick it up. So, I think Pristini at his best is an absolute monster. One of the most valuable players you could ask for, especially for a sub guy. Yeah, and I, I think Clacer having a star performance helps out as well. You know, that's sort of what you expect for, for from playing these big games and I think the one thing is after you saw them win game one you saw the energy you saw the the hype that they sort of brought to the stage they got to their feet they knew how important this was and I mean these guys like we said they were one of the first teams here with the last match they were practicing all day long they know they have a, a lot of mistakes to fix and they're trying to do it uh, again they lost this series but I feel like they're on the upward trend yeah and we definitely want to be paying attention to them I, I yeah. think it's almost more important that we pay attention to some of the things with the United because they could be a team to contest LG in the future if they do fix some of these problems let's take a look though at map number two this is the first one that LG was able to get on the board chance yeah there were some great moments though from like especially Clacer like right at the start right I think the first round there's a play where LG pushes up through through mid which they did quite a bit on offense then he makes the perfect read flies in through cabin right behind the players and then picks up a two-piece and, and then the next round it, it was a pretty nice strap for me united where they threw double smokes mid and b but then they faked it in win a so they had success doing a handful of things but then like the decision making later on just wasn't there uh, of course this is by far the biggest round just because octane not only does he get streaks and the ace but that it changes the game right like as soon as you have to deal with a fighter pilot and glide bomb it just gets so difficult and instead of a tie game lg with a nice lead there's only so much you can do i cannot wait for a team to play LG on a different set of three maps than the first three they've been playing every single series. They play London Docks, Hardpoint, they play Arden Forest, uh, CTF, and Search and Destroy. Someone switch it up, right? Like, you know how successful that they've been on all three of those maps. I, I would love to see next week how that changes because I feel like Luminosity right now, they're just a little bit too comfortable on these. And, and then despite that, I felt like United didn't even do a good job of, like, game planning for the Forest s &D. Like, despite yeah. the aggression we've seen from LG on offense repeatedly, it, it took United until, like, the last round to react to it properly and then they pulled out armored which is great if you're trying to respond to the mid pressure that lg kept putting on because you don't have to worry about the stuns and nades but at that point octane already had streaks and they have armored dealing with streaks so like and then you're just guaranteed death unless you hang out in cabin so like I, the search and destroy decision making I just don't think is there for E United like some situations they play very well and make decent reads in game but the amount of preparation the team does beforehand it just doesn't feel like it's there for search for me yeah I, I actually want to kind of as we jump into the third map take a peek at that CTF which E United was able to win I kind of want to open up what Chance just said to you Joe mm -hmm. and, and kind of ask you the question do you think that that might be what E United struggling with it almost seems like their decisions they almost don't know what they want to be doing at certain times it is definitely an internal struggle like there's no doubt about it I, I I just feel like there's problems going on you've heard some of the casters say you know you walk back there 
there has been some yelling and yelling is not always a bad thing or arguments aren't always a bad thing that's how you fix problems you get through it you come out stronger as a team again this was definitely a stronger performance today than yesterday but yes there are some internal problems and not exactly sure what they are or what they're trying to fix but they're they're definitely frustrated right now hey, i'm convinced though i think if united just game plans a little bit better has a better pick and ban draft especially against the top teams like lg and then if they just like stop playing force uh hard point more importantly but then just fix their s and d like just take the time to just very confidently know what you're going to do every single round of course so that ctf that game was virtually won in like the first two minutes not only i think it was persini that he goes for like the sneak cap off the over extension gets that flag out to create the stalemate and not only do united win that stalemate but they also get a rally cap as well so they played incredibly well on the ctf their first hard paint game was outstanding to me it's just the search for e united is just completely lackluster yeah and i, I don't want to make it seem like we're like picking on e united at all i think the real reasons that we're asking these questions right now we're putting such a focus on them even after they just lost this one to LG is because they do have the potential to be one of the top teams not only in this division but potentially in the entire league so it, when, when we start looking at these questions if we find an answer all of a sudden we're gonna see e United just having crazy performance well, yeah I, I mean this is a, a team we expect or has the potential to win tournaments right the past two open events they've gotten top six placings and the way that it's happened is they lost two round 11s they go to losers bracket they lose right away it's like they have a tough time sort of bouncing back after losses you're seeing that today and well map four doesn't help them whatsoever map four and not, not to like spoil it and jump right to the end but you, you talk about the energy that you saw earlier coming out of e united after a few of those map wins the energy after this hard point was completely gone they actually looked like they were about to beat each other up on the main stage and energy aside as well like why do you play the map you literally let like 24 hours ago get a hundred point glove by phase and now raise a hand who's a better or hard point team between phase or lg like it's lg almost without question so like why would you play a map where you did a horrible job on again against a better hard point team like unless you knew for sure exactly what your mistakes were there's no reason to go back into that yeah i mean i think this is just a comfort pick i think what we saw at division a is week one you sort of saw a lot of that and then once you got around to week two you saw a lot of adjustments through those map vetoes i have a feeling if I'm looking at this United roster, I feel like Gibraltar would be a great map for these guys. You have Arcides and Clacer who love to play AR. Silly, he's a bit of a slower player. Allow him to rotate to those hills. So we'll see if United makes any uh, adjustments, you know, towards that next week. But yeah, I mean, just looking at the scoreboard, nothing too pretty. Luminosity dominated on every single hill. Yeah, and after they get this momentum, they looked very strong going into the next SND as well. I mean, we can mention that energy again. All of a sudden, it just seemed like E United kind of had the, the air knocked out of their lungs on that one. They had a strong lead and for a, a while. It looked like United very easily could have taken this series. But then we get into the SND. What was the story there? I think, again, the search and destroy decision-making. Like, the first round, again, they showed a nice A push. They smoke off mid, so they, they have the cut clear, and, and they see success, but then they kind of mix things up after that. And I'm going to pick on Clay a little bit. He got first-blooded, I think, in three different situations, and that was part of the reason why Slack got streaks, which, again, the streaks, same thing in game two, were a, a massive game-changer. But Clay had one round where he played a little bit aggressively mid-map with an AR, and then he gets killed by a sub from Slack. Then he has another round where Silly's over trying to plant the bomb at A, and then Clacer's over here peeking by the B bomb site, granted probably just to try and cause the distraction potentially to bait some streaks out, but then Octane just kills him. And then there was another round where Clay on defense, uh, you think he either was trying to snipe or got sniped, whatever it might have been, but even over at the A bomb site, he just gets picked off. And then you're having constant 3v4s, and those rounds are just impossible to win. I would love to know too, because obviously for Division B, this is their first week. How many uh, times they've played St. Marie Dumont with those new spawns, you know? So I, this could have been the first time for both teams just feeling it out. But I, I have to give props to Slack. I feel like he really started that the momentum for Luminosity, earning those streaks. And then when he's allowed to do that, Octane then opens the game up, gets himself some streaks. As Chance said, as soon as those streaks come in, it just changes the, the, the dynamic of a map. You now have to use Mountain. B-bomb becomes harder to sort of control. Early on, it was AAA. You know, every team was just going to a bomb site. As soon as those streaks come in, 
they start to attack that b-bomb site they nade it out you saw that sky camera point of view where four nades come in on luminosity the reason is they clear that bomb site out as soon as they're able to do that they have streaks they know how easy it is to defend the b-bomb site with a fighter pilot with a glide bomb so i think just uh, overall a great game from select and octane and you know luminosity they won both searches which a lot of the times you don't see from those guys they typically dominate the respawns but a, a great game from them yeah 